Doug Casey is the chairman of Casey Research, best-selling author, world-renowned speculator, and libertarian philosopher. Doug Casey has garnered a well-earned reputation for his insights into politics, economics, and investment markets. Doug is widely respected as one of the preeminent authorities on rational speculation, especially in the high-potential natural resource sector. Doug literally wrote the book on profiting from periods of economic turmoil, which we're entering big time. His book, Crisis Investing, spent multiple weeks on the number one New York Times best-selling list and became the best-selling financial book of 1980, surpassing a big caliber names like a Free to Choose by Milton Friedman and The Real War by Richard Nixon and Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Cosmos. CaseyResearch.com. Okay, I threw out a cornucopia, Doug, of, of, of things that are happening, things that are going on. Two weeks ago, I tried to get you on the show about some international issues taking place, but uh, and, and the war on people trying to expatriate and capital control starting to go in. Uh, big global banks are meeting, openly saying in cash. What do you make of all this activity? Where is the state of the world economy right now, and what is Doug Casey doing to protect himself? Uh, well, Alex... It's great to be here, and I agree with everything you've said so far and enjoyed listening to you. As far as what's going to happen, uh, let me uh, give you a quote from Ray Bradbury. He said, something wicked this way comes, and that's exactly what's going on in the world today. Uh, on just about every front, uh, the military front, the economic front, the social front, the political front, uh, we're really heading into something really nasty. Um, so it's uh, it's a matter of great concern. And I think that your listeners uh, shouldn't just be listening. They should be acting about this because there's an excellent chance that even a year from now, even six months from now, it could be a month from now, uh, the whole world is going to be turned inside, uh, inside out and upside down in a lot of different ways. So where should we start? Where, you uh, know what? I'm going to give you the floor. Start wherever you want. <clears throat> well, I, I have to agree with you. First of all, what you said about FIFA, uh, most Americans <clears throat> really don't give a damn about uh, uh, soccer. Uh, I mean, most of what we know about soccer relates back to Brandy Chastain back in 1999 when she ripped her jersey off and displayed a wonderful body yes. when, when she scored that winning goal against the Chinese women team in a FIFA tournament. But, um, you know, so they're making a big deal out of uh, a bribery scandal in FIFA. But, you know, uh, most people are unaware that uh, FIFA is a, is a private group. It's been around for 100 years. It's controlled by the guys that run it. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, their main job is to... Uh, designate what the rules are for football and where the World Cup is going to be played, and money's passed around because their obligation is to these uh, 200 and some uh, government organizations that control soccer in various countries. So uh, what's the big deal here? I mean, uh, sure, they're paying themselves well, but uh, it's nothing compared to the kind of theft that goes on with governments themselves. Well, sure. I mean, I mean, the, the, the big banks spend like $2 billion of the $3 billion spent in a U.S. election operation. And really, from what I've seen, that's all they're doing is going in and, and giving money to the local sporting organizations as, as part of a profit-sharing operation. It just seems like the mafia that runs our country thinks it controls the whole world. Well, that's right, Alex. And, and that is the most disturbing thing about it. 99% uh, of all the people that watch soccer... Uh, that play soccer, uh, all the soccer that's played, it's all outside of the United States. And these people they've indicted, uh, they're all foreigners. And it's like the, the U.S. government, of all people, has become the world's moral arbiter, uh, arbiter and, and the world's policeman, where they're actually going to uh, foreign governments and getting these foreign citizens extradited to stand trial back in the U.S. for violating American laws. And they're nonsense laws, like money laundering, which only became a, 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 a crime, was manufactured as a crime, 
uh, only about 30 years ago. I mean, I mean this, is, this, is, uh, this is all shocking. I mean, nobody's safe anywhere in the world from the, the reach of the U.S. government anymore. This is just one more example. Uh, it, it, it's in the same class as last year when the U.S. sent a SWAT team into New Zealand to um, uh, attack Kim.com, who's a German citizen and was violating no laws either in New Zealand uh, or... Well, sure, let's Germany. expand on that. A law lets IRS seize accounts on suspicion, no crime required. That's the money laundering law that's written to be so broad outside of law, a 40-plus year Mexican restaurant that's got like eight seats deposits the cash every day. They admit the cash is all clean. They're putting it in a bank, so they steal the woman's $37,000 life savings. And, I, I mean, it's just crazy what our government's turned into. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, really, it, it's really turned into a cancer that's metastasizing. And it's taken on a life of its own at this point. It's... Uh, a great matter of concern. Yeah, that's one reason why I really uh, emphasize internationalizing yourself so that you're not totally under the control of the U.S. government. I mean, the risk in the financial markets is extreme, but it's nothing compared to the political risk that you have from your own government. Uh, very, very disturbing. What do you think spurring the power trip to have our, you know, I know you're an expert on this, our government starting a war with Russia, starting a war with China, and we're not lionizing Russia or China, but they're not the ones aggressively, especially Russia, doing this. And it even came out in mainstream news today that our government admits they tried to overthrow Egypt, our ally, and put the Muslim Brotherhood in. So now Egypt's joined Russia and doing joint naval patrols. Why would they double cross 35-year allies and, and, and put radicals in that chop Christians' heads off. Has our government gone criminally insane? Uh, I think that's a, a reasonable way to uh, describe it, uh, actually, uh, Alex. And looking at this uh, brouhaha in the eastern Ukraine, what we have there are two provinces that are populated mainly by Russian speakers. Uh, the Ukraine isn't a real country anyway. It's kind of a it's kind of a uh, an inter it's, it's kind of a political title intertidal zone uh, where a bunch of nationalities are caught between Russia and Romania and uh, uh, so forth. So these two provinces want to split off from the bankrupt and corrupt Ukrainian government and become independent. And uh, the U.S. is backing the corrupt Ukrainian government in making these two provinces stay part of the Ukraine. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, this, is, this is just crazy. And, and, and they're trying to implicate the Russians in this. Of course, the, the Russians are, are sympathetic to these people because they're, they're also Russians, and they'd like to see a, 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 a border country in between them and the Ukraine, which, of course, the Americans are trying to get into NATO. Uh, but, you know, this is like asking to start World War III. It really is criminally insane. You, again, are the best-selling author who broke down how to be an international individual seeing this whole thing coming. And you've seen booms and busts. You've been credited for making folks a lot of money that listen to your strategies. And I want to get some of those strategies with you coming up in the next segment. But in the eight or nine minutes before we go to break, Doug Casey of CaseyResearch.com, Looking at all the world news and this acceleration towards classical totalitarianism, do you think it's a conscious move or just the fact that different political elites have nothing holding them back? They've gotten away with so much, and so they're just slouching into a form of fascistic decadence. Well, they're definitely doing that, but I, I guess the question is, is it uh, a conscious move or is it... It's just something that happens with a life of its own. And um, I think it's a result of the fact that, that uh, you've got two kinds of people in the world. You've got people that like to control physical reality. And I like those kind of people. Uh, they, they're what improve the world. And then you've got another class of people, and those are people that like to control other people. 
And that's the type of person that gets into government, that goes into politics. So actually, it's not the best and the brightest people that go into government. It's the lowest and, and most degraded types that are attracted to the seat of power where they can control other people. So since that's the nature of the government, that it, just, that it, that it attracts that type of personality, it's inevitable uh, that uh, government becomes uh, worse and more malignant as time goes on. And, sure, and our know, system, as you know, was the founders who were the opposite, uh, true Renaissance men and women, they wanted a small government set up to try to keep that at bay for a while. The problem is the paradox, that free system, not perfect, but freer than any other, created so much wealth that the government, even though it had a small tax, became large and fat and arrogant. The people became decadent, and now we're about to wake up homeless on the continent our forebearers conquered. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, the, the situation has actually gotten out of control, and the government is so big and so powerful at this point that it can't be reversed. You know, even if Ron Paul uh, was elected uh, the last time, it wouldn't have done any good, because the first thing that would have happened to him, I believe, is he would have been sat down by the heads of various Praetorian agencies, like the NSA and the CIA and the FBI and a dozen others like that, plus a bunch of generals and admirals, and they would have told him the way the game is played. And if he didn't play it, his life would be at risk. And if for some reason he dodged those bullets, he'd be indicted by the, uh, by the U.S. Congress. And if for some reason that didn't work, the average American would be out in the street rioting because his rice bowl was going to be broken because the average American at this point gets more from the government than he pays in taxes. Not that, not that I believe... Uh, we should even have taxes. Well, sure, but that's where I was going to go next is they'd probably, he'd make some economic announcement, they manipulate the stock market, that's on record now, they would just dive it for a week, claim he did it, and all these fools would then say, run him out on a rail, they would support his impeachment. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right, Alex, and I, I'm afraid that when the next crisis uh, really blows up uh, in the next little while, uh, the American people, Bubis Americanus, as H.L. Mencken said, is going to clamor for somebody to kiss it all and make it better. Uh, we could very well wind up with some type of a military dictatorship in this country as the next step. Well, that's what General Tommy Franks told Cigar Aficionado in 2013. Hmm. I'm a fan of Cigar Aficionado. Do you like cigars, too? I, I, I do like them. Uh, and, I, and, of course, the, the, the type I like, they try to embargo. <laughs> That's right. Well, when I see you next, we're going to have to sit down over a whiskey and a cigar and chat about all this stuff at, uh, at leisure. But, of course, tobacco is becoming illegal in this country, so uh, we might have to smoke that cigar someplace outside of the U.S. It's amazing. From land of the free, home of the brave, to the land of what would you call America now? Because there's still a lot of great people here. You know, I was running down... Uh, I, 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 I'd call most of them whip dogs at this point. They're whip dogs, and when somebody in a uniform points a finger at them, they roll over on their backs and wet themselves. It's absolutely disgusting. I mean, the idea of America is dead in the United States at this point. It certainly is, and the constabulary itself are a bunch of whip dogs scared following orders. I do see, though, in the federal government... And at state levels, we get a lot of leaks, a lot of good intel. Uh, as bad as the government is, per capita, there are more awake people I'm finding now in government because they know that things are getting really corrupt than I even see in the general population. So I, 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 I do find that people in government finally realize and, 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 and understand something wicked this way comes. Yeah, you're right, Alex. But what, I'll tell you what concerns me. It's that... Uh, the good people that are in government, uh, uh, I think they're being driven out by the bad people. Uh, in other words, a decent person, because more and more bad people gravitate towards the government, he doesn't want to be in that environment. Uh, it scares him, uh, with good reason. He wants to go out uh, someplace else where he's not surrounded by criminal personalities. So 
I mean, that's another reason why I think it's getting worse. I hate to be so negative. No, but we got to be honest, and, and that's what founded America. Talk about your philosophy, what made you come up with this international man idea that became you know, really a sensation and still is today uh, for a record number of expatriates and others. When did when did the worm turn for you, or, or, or were you always that way, Doug Casey? Well, you know, like yourself, I'm a I'm a libertarian. I believe in free minds and free markets, and I, I think I was born that way. Quite frankly, uh, it, it may be some type of a genetic mutation, for all I know. But um, the, the the thing is that all of our ancestors. All of us who are Americans, they all came here from foreign countries. And everybody, our ancestors came to America because they wanted to get away from uh, being turned into slaves in different countries around the world. Uh, the problem is, is that the U.S. government, since it's going in the same direction as those governments that our ancestors ran away from, uh, now we have to run away from, we have to go someplace else ourselves. We have to, like, find a new America uh, someplace. But King George the 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 10th knows we're running away, and so now our own government's creating a global government to try to capture everyone. Yeah, it's right. Uh, that's, that's right, because uh, we can try to run, but we can't hide. I mean, the fact that at this point, uh, it's... Very, very hard, almost impossible for an American to open up a foreign bank or brokerage account means that we're trapped like lobsters uh, here in the United States. Now, of course, most Americans are going to say, I, I don't want to leave America. This is the greatest country in the world. And it certainly used to be. But you no longer even have the option of living somewhere else because if you can't open up a foreign bank or brokerage account, how are you going to get your money out of the country? I mean, if, 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 the, the, the various uh, exits, possible exits, if you want to take advantage of them, are, are, are closing almost daily. You're right. Doug Casey, CaseyResearch.com. Stay there. We're going to come back in the next segment and get into solutions and your prognosis for the future. Okay, Doug, uh, I've been ranting here for five minutes. Thank you for holding during that. I know you don't ever want to come on and toot your own horn about your books, about your newsletters, about your invaluable research that's cutting edge. Tell us about some of the uh, research uh, materials you've got available uh, for the public at Casey Research. Talk about some of your books and then get into what you're doing to get prepared, what you think this monster is that's coming down the road at us, this mad dog, and how you and others are getting prepared. Why are the elites in The Guardian now? buying armored redoubts, underground bunkers, running to New Zealand. I mean, when the elite themselves are split in the scene, they may have cooked this goose a little too much, may have killed the golden goose. Um, Doug Casey. Uh, where to start, Alex? Uh, you know, one thing I was thinking about uh, as you were talking earlier is, is, is the fact that uh, Governments around the world at this point are trying to get rid of cash, uh, in other words, paper currency. There, there's a, a movement on that since everybody has a cell phone today to use the cell phone to, to obviate even credit cards and certainly obviate cash so that everything you buy or sell has to go through your bank account. Uh, at that point, the government knows exactly uh, what you're doing, what you're buying and what you're selling, because there would be no cash anymore to, uh, to, uh, to even buy a candy bar, quite frankly. Uh, now, th this is a very disturbing trend. It's taken root just over the last year or two, and it's accelerating rapidly all over the world. Uh, but... Well, what do you do about that? Uh, one thing that you should do about it, I think, is buy for your personal possession uh, gold and silver coins at this point. Uh, gold and silver have been used as money throughout history for lots of good reasons, and they will continue to be used as money in the future. So 
for the sake of your personal privacy, uh, you want to own a lot of gold and silver, I think. Uh, it'll obviate uh, uh, the government's efforts to make all uh, money transfers electronic. So th that's just a thought. And I'll point out right now that as we speak right now, uh, both of those metals are once again in a very reasonable buying zone. Silver is about $16. Gold is about $1,175 an ounce. Uh, I think the next step is up for both of them from this, from this point forward. So I think that uh, all of your listeners ought to have a significant stash of gold and silver coins put away in the safest place that they can think of. So that's one piece of advice that I'd recommend. And by the way, as you know, it's come out in the news what you and others said years ago. The big central banks have been naked shorting gold and silver, artificially driving down its price while they buy it and hoard it. Well, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's very problematical. Uh, in, in the world, there are about 6 billion ounces of gold that have been mined since the dawn of history. We don't know exactly how many ounces of gold there are in the world, but the best estimates are about 6 billion ounces of gold. In other words, less than an ounce for every man, woman, and child in the country. So I think it's incumbent upon everybody to have at least an ounce of gold in their own possession, better 10 or 20 or 100 or more ounces of gold in their possession. I, I, I think the price of gold is going up and the price of silver perhaps even more. Uh, so that's step number one. But uh, step number two is because uh, all of these governments are creating trillions of new currency units. This isn't just the U.S. government, uh, starting with uh, QE1 and QE2 and the bailouts and TARP and all this type of thing. But the Europeans are doing the same thing, the Japanese and the Chinese. So this is a worldwide phenomenon. And the next step, I think, is the Greater Depression uh, gets worse in the next few years. It's going to be much higher levels of inflation. It's going to be much worse than things were in 2008 and 2009, and also much different. But one of the advantages, I'm trying to look at the bright side of of their destroying all these national currencies, is it's going to create more bubbles in the economy. And right now, as we speak, we're in the biggest financial bubble in history, and it's in the bond market. Interest rates have been driven down to zero, actually zero in some cases, uh, which means the bond prices are at an all-time high. So I think the next step is that the bond market uh, crashes, and that's much more serious than the stock market crashing, uh, but it'll bring the stock market down too, and it'll bring the real estate market down with it quite possibly because, unfortunately, in the U.S. and most of the Western world, real estate floats on a sea of debt, and if you can't borrow at reasonable interest rates, you really can't buy or sell interest rate uh, real estate because... Most houses have mortgages against them today. So it's, it's a serious problem, but it's a problem that presents opportunities because although most people are going to lose most of what they have, uh, it's going to be possible to capitalize on that and as a speculator to, um, to win from the unwinding of all these things. And people can specifically go to kcresearch.com and see some of the strategies you've been employing. Well, we have a lot of free publications. We have paid publications, too, that have specific stock recommendations. But in terms of uh, general advice, we've got a huge amount of free information that I, that I urge people to access uh, to start thinking about these things and start moving. Because, you know, the problem is, is that uh, a lot of people that listen to you and, for that matter, listen to me, they think about these things, but they don't act. And uh, I think the time is getting short for action. And what form of action should they take? Uh, putting aside a significant amount of savings 
in precious metals uh, is the first and most important thing. Second thing is, if you can, if you're in a financial position to do so, diversify your assets internationally so all of your wealth isn't under the control of just the U.S. government. And three would be to um, look for ways to capitalize on what they're doing, uh, speculations that will profit from all the money creation going on. So you don't want to be a deer in the headlights. Uh, this is the time for action. Let's talk about deer in the headlights, because every financial expert out there says, obviously, the trillions in derivatives, the, the quadrillions, the the velocity of money, the QE unlimited, the, the currency race to the bottom, uh, what's happening with the bond markets, that it's a bubble, bubbles that will pop, and then it runs from bad to worse. But because of all their high-frequency trading and plunge protection teams and other manipulations, they're able to build this bubble, I think, to a level never before seen. Uh, a, do you agree with that statement? Is it wrong? And how yeah, do you I, see I, this I thing coming down? I, yeah, in other words, what, what's going on right now is, is building up to something much bigger than what happened uh, during the last depression from 1929 to 1946. Uh, it's much bigger, much more serious, and governments are much more powerful than they were back then. So um, it's a uh, hold on to your hat time, and I think we're right at the edge of the uh, we're right at the edge of the precipice right now. But I, I don't think most people are even aware of that because when you walk outside, you the sun is shining, children are still playing, uh, maybe the occasional cop is beating one with his nightstick, but. Uh, you can go down to the Walmart and buy cheap goods. Everything looks pretty good on the surface. But uh, I think it's a hologram that's about to be exposed at this point. And that's why the elite are digging into armored bunkers. What are they thinking is going to come? I mean, we can. I, mean, I know you talk to a lot of uh, really wealthy people, but these are real entrepreneurs that actually go out and explore and mine and drill and build things. Uh, they're not the uh, parasite variety, but I know a lot of those folks that aren't parasites, they're also uh, preparing escape plans as well. Well, so much of what goes on in the world today is financed by the U.S. government. In other words, yeah, you're, you're quite correct about that. Uh, there is cause for optimism, of course. Uh, it's that there are two reasons why things have been getting better despite the depredations of government with its taxes and its regulation and its currency. Let's inflation. end on a positive note. Sorry to interrupt. Doug Casey, CaseyResearch.com. Let's come back and talk about the flip side. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. We've been talking about the problem and some of the solutions. But, yeah, wh what are the optimistic, positive things with our final segment with Doug Casey, the legend, straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. up in the third hour. We're also going to get another update and see if there's been some developments that may be taking place in Austria covering Bilderberg. But Doug Casey, getting into the optimistic good things that are happening despite corporate combines that work with government uh, to basically freeze society in a new dark age, uh, the renaissance continues. So go ahead and finish up with some positive notes, Doug Casey. Yeah, uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, two things, actually. Are, are the mainsprings of human progress and cause for tremendous optimism. Number one is that the average person understands that he has to produce more than he consumes and save the difference, and that builds capital, the excess of production over consumption. And every individual knows he has to do that for his own life. And as you set that aside, that builds capital. Uh, which allows civilization to progress. Uh, the second thing is science and technology. There are more scientists and engineers alive today than have lived in all of previous history put together. And they're inventing things, they're discovering things, and that's what really makes life better. And that ties in with the capital saved by average people because... You need capital in order to do science and engineering. The problem is this. Uh, 
uh, and how the government could destroy these two mainsprings of human progress is that when the average guy saves, what does he save it? He saves in cur his currency, and he saves in dollars. But what happens if the government destroys the national currency by inflating it? You wake up, you've got $100,000 in the bank that you were planning on retiring on. That's $100,000 that's available for entrepreneurs to borrow or that you could invest in stocks and so forth. But if that money is destroyed, like a, a Zimbabwe dollar might, was destroyed a few years ago, that capital has vanished. Now your retirement is gone, and the capital for the scientists and engineers is also gone. So it's a double whammy. And the force that's doing that is the government by inflating the currency. So uh, there's cause for lots of optimism for the two reasons I mentioned, savings and technological progress. But the state could destroy both of those things by destroying the value of the dollar. I hope I've been clear as to how that would work. But uh, so it's, it's kind of a good news, bad news kind of thing. Well, Doug, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I, I mean, I totally agree with you that, that, that this is going on. And I just hope the general public realizes that they're in great peril if they don't get involved in trying to basically inform others. Uh, but it almost seems like either somebody cares innately or they don't care. I mean, I'm not really into predestination when it comes to my soul or when it comes to other things. Uh, but it does make you wonder why some people will not get involved promoting freedom, even if their life depends on it. Like I try to tell people that major shopping carts have cookies. They know whether you're a big spender. They know if you're a smart shopper. They will charge you more depending on your habits. I put a video out on that, and a bunch of commenters said I was making it up, even though it was in mainstream news. I mean, it's like there seems to be an inverse instinct to want to be cheated and screwed over. Maybe these people just don't want to believe they're being screwed over. I, it's just crazy. Well, I don't know where it's going to end, Alex, but we're going to find out in the next couple of years. We are. Doug we... Casey, do five more minutes with us. I know you got to go. I want you to finish up back in 60 seconds. Short break, and then the third Thank hour. Thank you for listening to GCN. Uh, looking at this situation, finish up that point you were trying to make, and then I wanted to ask you, uh, in closing, in your gut, uh, you know, promoting liberty for 40-something years, what do you think is going to end up happening to humanity? Because we could have government crazies and others make mistakes of the past, and then it would just be, you know, 100 million dead in World War II, or it'd be Mao Zedong Tung killing 84 million of his own people, because uh, leftists in the CIA helped put him in power. But now with nuclear weapons and all the rest of it, I mean, these control freaks really could destroy everything. Uh, we've got a report on Infowars.com coming up in the next segment after you leave us, where Bilderberg is inviting Hillary's chief of staff to the event. She was at Bilderberg 20, uh, I mean, 2008. Uh, I mean, is this really the best the elite can give us, Doug Casey? I don't know, Alex. There's cause for optimism, but perhaps at this moment, a lot more cause for pessimism. All I can tell you is uh, what I do myself. You know, it, 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 it's funny. I go on shows like yours, and I say these things, and I ask myself, why am I doing it? I'm a rich guy. Uh, I don't really have anything to gain. I mean, I have a, a publishing business where I talk about these things, but the risk-reward uh, of saying things that run counter to the mainstream is getting a little bit out of whack. And I ask myself, why am I taking the risk to even say these things? And I guess the reason is uh, I actually believe in karma. Uh, what goes around com comes around. And I think that if out of the people that are listening, only one or two people, something twigs in their mind, and they start thinking and start investigating, it's a good karma thing. On the one hand, I believe in the French phrase, sauve qui peut, which means basically, let he who can save himself, or every man for himself. But on the other hand, uh, I really do believe in karma, and trying to make people aware 
of the problems in the world today, so they're in a position to save themselves. I think things are going to get really grim. I think they're going to get really grisly over the next few years. I mean, that's all I can say. Uh, and, and I say these things, it's not particularly to my advantage, it's not even to your advantage to say these things, because it's pinning targets on our back, uh, on our backs in, in, in today's world. But, um, well, Doug, Doug I, mean, I, I mean, I can answer your question for you so you don't know why you do it. I've psychoanalyzed myself. It's not that I'm some goody two-shoes, fake bleeding heart. They've got studies out that the fake bleeding hearts are six times more likely to actually rob from you or not to give in charity. They have big studies out of the university in Canada uh, that it's libertarians and then conservatives are the biggest givers to charity. And, and you want to take care of yourself. You want to help your friends and family by building them up. You want to teach them how to fish, not give them fish. And you have a feeling of, of, of connection and empathy and you want to build up humanity and you want to teach people what you've learned. You want to empower people. But these control freaks see other people empowered as a threat to them because they're so weak. Anybody who's a real leader, who's truly strong, wants to build up others because you're so confident. That's right. I like to be surrounded by other people that are uh, successful and moral and rich. I mean, it makes my life better and richer and easier when I'm surrounded by people like that. And, and just as you said, it's the sociopaths of the world that want to bring everybody else down because it artificially makes them higher. And those are exactly the kind of people that are drawn to to the government today. It's very disturbing. Absolutely. Teamed up with select corporations to create a global monopoly under their control with a planetary cashless society. Powerful interview, Doug Casey. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me on, Alex. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir. You're amazing.